Hi, this is Greg Thomas and welcome to the Welsh American Channel. In this video, we will begin to explore some of the earliest Welsh settlements in North America. In the future, I will cover the legend of Madoc Epawain Gwyneth, who was, according to folklore, a Welsh prince who sailed to America in 1170, over 300 years before Columbus or, according to some others, an individual named Maddock who arrived far earlier in America. If you feel that Maddock came to America before Columbus, feel free to make your comments below. I am still doing extensive research on this topic, so more about this in the future. We know very little about some of the first or earliest Welsh adventurers who came to America in the 1600s. Fragments of history record individuals like Rhys Jones, sometimes spelled R-I-C-E Jones. He was among the group of settlers who established the first permanent English settlement in the New World at Jamestown, Virginia in 1607. There is some evidence that Welsh sailors may have visited the North American coast in the 16th century, even before the establishment of Jamestown, but no records of these voyages have survived. Another earlier settler was Howell ap John of Griffith, who settled in Virginia in 1620. He was a member of the group of settlers known as the First Families of Virginia, and is considered to be one of the earliest Welsh immigrants to the American colonies. Other early Welsh immigrants to North America include Thomas Ap Evans, who settled in Massachusetts in 1636, and William Ap John, who settled in Maryland in 1658. Again, very little is known about these individuals. Yet another early Welshman to emigrate to North America was Richard Richards, who arrived in Massachusetts in 1608. He was one of the founding settlers of the Popham Colony, which was established in present-day Maine. The Popham Colony was a short-lived English colonial settlement. Keep in mind that we're talking about 400 years ago, and these historical records are fragmented and very limited on the background and achievement of these courageous individuals. However, it wasn't very long before the first proposed Welsh colony was established in America and it was planted in what is now Newfoundland, Canada. This first colony failed after a few years and because of that very few actually know about it. So we will give some due credit to these brave pioneers today. The story of this first Welsh colony begins with the idea of a Welsh aristocrat named William Vaughan. He was a Welsh lawyer, scholar, and poet who was born in Carmarthenshire, Wales, on the family estate called Golden Grove. The Vaughan family was descended from an ancient prince of Prowess. Prowess was an ancient kingdom within eastern Wales that once included some of the western Midlands region of England. Deeply concerned about poor economic conditions in Wales, he became interested in overseas colonization. He decided to try and plant a colony in Newfoundland because it was accessible, well-known, and possessed an established fishery. Vaughan had the desire to establish a Welsh colony where settlers could maintain their own language and culture. In 1616, he bought a grant of land, the Southern Avalon Peninsula, from present-day Calvert to Placentia Bay, on the island of Newfoundland. He purchased the grant from the London and Bristol Company. In 1617, he sent Welsh colonists to the fishing town of Renews to establish a permanent colony, which he called New Cambrio, a little Wales in the New World. This land was earlier settled by migratory fishermen and then by these colonists. A colony was first proposed in 1610 by the London and Bristol Company, which had previously started an English colony at Cooper's Grove. But settlement was delayed by the presence of the English pirate Peter Easton, who raided the coastlands. But by 1615, the territory was sold to William Vaughan, who initially sent settlers to Aquafort, which is about six miles north of Renews. Geographically, this is about 52 miles south of the present-day city of St. John's. The colonists were ill-equipped to succeed and without an experienced leader. 
The winters were long and brutal, and they spent the winter huddled in cabins previously built by migratory fishermen intended for summer use. In 1618, Vaughn sent out a second batch of settlers under the command of Richard Whitbourne, whom he appointed governor for the life of the colony. He was originally sent to establish law and order in the colony, but found the colonists to be discouraged and unmotivated due to the climate and constant hardship. Unfortunately, he had to deal with a pirate attack on one of his ships by deserters from Sir Walter Raleigh's Guiana fleet. In the end, only six colonists spent the winter of 1619 at Renews, and then they abandoned the settlement the following year. So Whitbourne was governor from 1618 until 1620 when Vaughan began to abandon the colony by selling off portions of the land. By 1619, Vaughan signed over part of his grant to Henry Carey, an English political friend who served in the House of Commons. Vaughan's brother also had convinced him to give up a portion of his tract to George Calvert, also known as Lord Baltimore, another English politician. In this location, George Calvert established his colony of Avalon. Vaughan retained the southern part of his original tract. After the return of Whitbourne, Vaughan visited his colony in 1622 and returned to England in 1625, bringing with him two written books ready for publication. Vaughan promoted Newfoundland as a settlement in an unusual, whimsical book entitled The Golden Fleece, published in 1626. In 1628, he transferred his interests to the colony of Virginia. He died at his house in Carmarthenshire in August of 1641. After the failure of New Cambrill, another Welshman named John Miles was suffering religious persecution in Wales, and he led a group of Welsh Baptists to Massachusetts in 1662. Though at first this American colony refused to tolerate these Welsh Baptists, eventually Massachusetts granted them land where they established the town of Swansea and the first Baptist church, which stands today as the oldest Welsh church in America. Two decades after Baptists first arrived, Welsh members of the Society of Friends, or Quakers, would establish another and much larger Welsh settlement in America. This is such an interesting and fascinating story, I will dedicate part two to this historic and significant event. It all happens because of a man named William Penn, another aristocrat believed to be of Welsh descent who would establish a Welsh colony like no other in the New World. William Penn was a unique man who in writing to a friend named Robert Turner in 1681 stated that his original intention was to call present-day Pennsylvania New Wales. We will find out why he wanted this name and why it didn't happen in part two. So join us next time on the Welsh American Channel for Early Welsh Settlers in America, Part 2. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, and please feel free to make any comments below. This is Greg Thomas saying Hoylem Nawr. Bye for now.